Hi everyone. In this video, let us learn about dominant mode in the circular waveguide. <laughs> so, what do you mean by dominant mode? What do you mean by dominant mode? What are the different types of modes when a wave is being traveled inside the circular waveguide or a rectangular waveguide or any type of waveguide when a wave is being traveled, it will be traveled in different different patterns. Okay. So, <clears throat> when a wave travels inside the waveguide it experiences different patterns different patterns these patterns known as modes okay so those modes we call it as the transverse electric mode and as well as transverse magnetic mode transverse electric mode and transverse magnetic mode modes are represented by modes are represented by m comma n modes are represented by m comma n such that we can say t e m n t m m n so the values of m n are given by m is equal to 0 n equal to 0 then that mode is t e 0 0 or t m 0 0 and similarly if m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 then it is t e 1 1 tm11 like that different different several types of modes will be there how many modes are there infinite number of modes are there okay generally there are infinite infinite number of modes are there now coming to the dominant mode Okay, this is what the existing of modes inside the waveguide. Okay, this is valid for any type of waveguide, circular waveguide or rectangular waveguide, whatever it is. This statement is valid for any type of waveguide. Now, let us see what do you mean by dominant mode. Dominant mode is nothing but the mode which is having the highest cutoff wavelength. The mode which is having highest cutoff wavelength, that mode is known as dominant mode. Okay. The mode... which is having highest cut off wavelength highest cut off wavelength nothing but lambda c is known as dominant mode is known as dominant mode okay now among these infinite number of modes which mode is having the highest cutoff wavelength that mode is known as dominant mode hope you understand what do you mean by mode and what do you mean by dominant mode okay this is the definition of dominant mode the mode which is having the highest cutoff wavelength that is nothing but dominant mode now what is the definition of cutoff wavelength so in order to know which is the dominant mode in a, a circular waveguide for te and tm we should know what is lambda c from the definition of lambda c the cutoff wavelength is given by lambda c is equal to 2 pi a see this lambda c is especially separate for circular waveguide and rectangular waveguide <coughs> okay here these definitions are not common with respect to cutoff wavelength 2 pi a by p n m this is the cutoff wavelength for the circular waveguide in t e mode this is for t m mode t m mode okay 
so lambda c cut off wavelength is defined as it is equal to 2 pi a a is nothing but radius of the circular wave guide 2 pi a by p n m p n m okay this p n m p dash n m these parameters are, have we have derived it from the bessel's functions and similarly the cut off wavelength lambda c is equal to 2 pi a by p dash n m this is for te mode te mode okay so lambda c is equal to 2 pi a by p n m this is for tm mode transverse magnetic mode and uh, lambda c is equal to 2 pi a by p dash n m that is for transverse electric mode now let us see which is the dominant mode in among all these modes uh, how the different types of modes will be existed based on the values of m and n okay uh, let us see see the numerator part see the denominator part which is variable here in the numerator of this cutoff wavelength 2 pi a 2 pi a is there for one circular waveguide there are infinite number of modes that are traveled inside the waveguide consider a circular waveguide understand see clearly what i am saying See, this is the circular waveguide. Okay. For the same circular waveguide, infinite number of modes are there. For the same circular waveguide, for this circular waveguide, there are infinite number of modes. Now, what she, what is the radius of this one? Radius is A. Radius is A for throughout the waveguide. It doesn't have any changes inside the waveguide. The radius is constant for all the infinite number of modes. So, is there any change in the numerator part? No. 2 pi is fixed and a is fixed. So, in the numerator part for both the Tm and Te for infinite number of modes in Tm mode and for infinite number of modes in Te mode, this numerator is constant. Okay, numerator is not a variable thing. Now, coming to the denominator part, denominator part is changing with respect to the mode. Suppose if n is equal to 0, m is equal to 0, then it is p0, 0, 0. And similarly, if it is 1, 1, it is p11. Okay, so depending upon the values of m and n, the denominator parts are being changed for Te and as well as Tm. We should know what is the value of p n m and what is the value of p dash n m in the with respect to the m and n values so that we can uh, derive what could be the value of the lambda c <coughs> hope you understand what i am talking about okay so coming to the various values of this p n m with respect to the values of m and n okay so if m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0, then it is p01. p01, its value is 2.405. And similarly, if it is 0, 2, it is 5.52. If it is 0, 3, it is 8.645. Now, among all these, among all these, see all these values are for h. The value of h, the value of h can be obtained by this table for p and n. Okay. Now, lambda c is equal to 2 pi a by p and m. What is the relation between h, p and m and a? h is equal to, or h or h and m is equal to, p n m by a so simply we can write lambda c is equal to 2 pi by h is it clear <coughs> 2 pi by h or h n m in both the cases okay if it is for tm it is p n m if it is for uh, te you can just simply give a bar here p n m dash by a 
okay both are same but finally ultimately we will get the expression for the cutoff wavelength as uh, lambda c is equal to 2 pi by hnm the factor which is varying with respect to m and n is in the denominator okay see clearly what i am saying the factor which is varying with respect to m and n is in the denominator so whenever this value is less the cutoff wavelength will be more okay so we need to choose a value from the table in such a way that that value should be very less so that that gives the maximum cutoff wavelength okay so if you take this first table in the first table which is valid for tm and the second table is valid for te because it is p dash nm it is pnm okay so which is the least value here which is the least value the least value is this one among all these different values of course if you go beyond the number of values like n equal to 4 m equal to 4 definitely the value will be increased so if you take this the first one 2.405 that is the least value so you can say in tm the dominant mode is 0 1 tm 0 1 and similarly for te which is the least value among all these values this is the least possible value okay and here it is the least value so the coming to the te the dominant mode is te 1 1 because if you take this h value as minimum among all these this is the minimum value if you take this minimum value and substitute here then lambda c will be maximum compared to all other values okay so from the table consider f r t e from the second table uh, we can say it is 1.841 h11 is equal to 1.841 which is giving a dominant mode of dominant mode for te in circular waveguide in circular waveguide is te11 this is the dominant mode okay so in this way you can select any type of the mode whether it is a dominant mode or a degenerative mode from the existing experimental tables okay we have not derived these tables these tables are given by the experimental results from the Bessel's functions okay thank you